we will continue our visit at Southside Community Church. This fable is from the book Once Upon Internal Control written by James Ilvoke. The church has good controls in place which provide protection from false accusations that appeared out of nowhere. For more information on how to set up good procedures in your local church, please visit www.onceuponinternalcontrol.com. Now let's listen as the pastor and office manager discuss the call from a reporter. Hi Pastor Paul. Good morning Stephanie. How are you today? Okay. Sort of. After yesterday it is hard to remember that this is the day that the Lord has made. I know, but even with this mess, we need to remember that the tomb is still empty and God is still on the throne. Yes I know. I had a poor night's sleep knowing that we have to call that reporter today. Sorry to hear that. Well, we had a conference call with about half of the elders last night. How did that go? Very well. The elders completely support the plan you and I came up with. They gave us permission to move as quickly as we can. Were they upset that someone called a reporter with all those silly accusations? They do know the claims about you living an exorbitant lifestyle are not true, correct? They were irritated. But they know how we do things and they also know those stories aren't true because they look at the monthly financial statements. They all know where we spend our money. It just makes me mad that someone is saying you're traveling first class to your speaking engagements and staying in four-star hotels. Stephen, he is the chairman of the elders you know, he laughed at it. He approves all my expense reports and sees every credit card statement. He said he can guarantee with what we spend on airfare I'm not going first class. He told the rest of the elders that he knows for certain I am very economical when I travel. I know that too. I review all those expense reports and credit card bills before they go to Stephen. By the way, those trip reports that summarize all the costs for each of your trips really do a good job of explaining what the trip is for and organizing all the costs. I was not happy when the elders told me to start doing those trip summaries. It has been such a hassle. Stephen says they really make it easier for him to review everything. And it also looks like they're going to be very handy today. Did the elders have any speculation who has been spreading these rumors? Oh, a couple elders wanted to start guessing. I stopped that. It does not matter. I am still upset. Well, we have really good approval procedures. We have the best documentation of expenses I have ever seen at any place I've ever worked. The board sure did push hard on that issue, didn't they? That's for sure. Remember that time you noticed I listed driving to the conference twice on two consecutive expense reports? Oh yes, I sure do. I was a little nervous mentioning that to you. You did the right thing. Don't know how I missed it but I'm glad you caught it before Stephen did. That would have been even more embarrassing. Those policies that the elders put in place apply to everyone. Especially me and Stephen. Nobody is exempt. You review everybody's expense reimbursement and then Stephen approves yours and mine. So the elders agreed to let the reporter see all our documentation? Yes. They fully agree that is the best way to shut down the story. This reporter seems to understand churches. She did a good job covering the embezzlement at the church across town. She did not pull any punches which I know hurt Pastor Susan. But from what I can tell, she was fair. I'm not sure I trust a reporter. I hear you. I'm nervous too. The elders think we will get better treatment from her than we would from anyone else. In addition, if we can shut down these ridiculous rumors now it will be a whole lot better than having to deal with some distorted article next week. Okay. Let's go. Good. So you will pull my expense reports and your expense reports and the very few that the elders have turned in and all of the credit card statements. Okay I will have Jonathan print out the general ledger activity for all of the accounts that have travel and entertainment along with a few other accounts that I think the reporter will want to look at. While you do that I will call the reporter and tell her that we will give her not only a statement but an interview and we will let her look at any of the travel documentation she wants to see. Her deadline isn't until late tonight so she has enough time. I think she will drop everything and be here within an hour after I call. I will set up everything in the conference room. And I will be there the whole time she is here to answer any questions or pull anything else she wants to see. That sounds great. 
I will talk to her when she gets here and will be available for any questions that she has. I think we have a good plan. I agree. Let's pray. Hello again Kathleen. Have you finished going through the material? Yes, I have. Thanks for letting me see them. Stephanie was very helpful. What did you find? Just what you said. Good. The credit card statements and airfare receipts made it obvious all your travel is at coach rates and all the trips made sense. Okay. What else? The hotels are in a reasonable range. Nice, but reasonable. Your expense reports and the attached receipts make it very easy to see who you ate with and how much you spent. All of that is quite different from what I was told happened. So the information you were given was just made up? So it seems. There does not seem to be anything to report. I need to get working on another story. I am glad to hear that. Now that you know it was false information, can you tell me who you talked to? Off the record would be fine. Off the record what I can tell you is I will never, ever burn a source. Even if they were completely wrong. Oh. I see. What I can also tell you is that we will be very cautious in believing anything this person tells us in the future. As soon as I get back I will let my editor and my buddies know what happened. Okay well that is something. By the way, we have a community outreach next weekend. Would you like to stop by and see what is going on? I saw some posters in the hallway. Looks like I could get a story out of it. That is, if I am welcome to be here. We would be happy to see you. Good. I will be here and I will bring a photographer. Great. See you Saturday. Goodbye. Thanks again for your time, Pastor Paul. Bye. Let me give you a new way to think about internal controls. Instead of the usual reasons to do all that stuff accountants recommend, consider for a moment that good procedures protect your staff. For the weak, internal controls provide protection from the opportunity to do something wrong. For the strong, internal controls provide protection from temptation to do something really bad. For the innocent, Internal controls provide protection from false accusations. In this cartoon you saw how good procedures protected the pastor from fabricated rumors. Those approved expense reports and good documentation protected him from false accusation. Think back to the first cartoon in this series. You saw the church had good procedures in place. Those internal controls would provide protection for a person who is weak emotionally or spiritually if some opportunity appeared to do something wrong. In our next cartoon series we will see an illustration of how internal controls can protect the strong from temptation. For more ideas on how to improve internal controls in a local church, feel free to visit www.onceuponinternalcontrol.com.